Welcome to another Storyboarder tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating an animation in Storyboarder. So I want to go to Create New Storyboard, and I'll just create from blank, and I'll make this one um, HD, so it's going to fit a standard monitor 16 to 9 ratio, and I'll just save it to my desktop and call it um, My Animation, and click Create. And so Storyboarder can be used for animation, and it's actually a really good tool, especially for kids, because it's very has a good interface. It's very basic. You can't do advanced animation with it, but you can absolutely do some uh, fun, basic animation. And so what I'm going to do, and let me turn on um, some of these grids here. I'll just turn on so I can see my center line. And I'll turn that off. It'll just be in the way. Uh, what I'm going to do is just start drawing. So we're on our, this is, we can consider this our first frame. And to achieve animation in Storyboarder, what we need to do is be very aware of this duration over here. Uh, you can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to, to come here, and we'll make the duration in milliseconds. Um, a thousand milliseconds is one second, so I might do like 250. So that's going to be six frames, and so this will be sort of a uh, not super fast, but a, a good speed animation. And let's just do like a, a typical like this bouncing ball animation. I'll grab the red color here, and I'll just draw a ball right here in the center. Now I want this ball to fall down and just kind of bounce up against nothing and then bounce back up. So what I'm going to do is advance to the next frame by clicking this plus icon. And now we're on the next frame or the next board. I mean, it's not really the next frame because this played for six frames. So this is the next um, part that I'm going to draw. And I could try and draw the ball and hope that I get it a little bit lower than the last one. But the best thing to do is to, to turn on onion skin. And so I'm going to erase this, everything on that drawing and go turn on this right here. We click and this turns on onion skin, which shows us what's happening in the, in the frames around it. So the frame before this one, there's nothing. But this one is showing a blank canvas and then in a lighter color showing what was happening in the frame before it. So now I can kind of reference this and draw the ball falling down a little bit. And when I go to the next um, board or the next frame, I'll, I'll just I'll call it frames. In the next frame here, it shows us what was happening before it. And so now I can go quickly just draw down here and we can create a little animation of this. And this is just a very basic, maybe as it hits the ground, we'll have it squash here a little bit, really thin. Oh, and now we're referencing, we're seeing that the last one for some reason is being stuck on there. So we see this bouncing down, this little glitch I think as it was doing that. And then we'll have it bounce back up a little bit. And this is not at all proper animation technique. I'm just doing this real quick. So we see it's kind of glitching and showing back. For some reason, that one's like stuck in space. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then we'll do this. It comes back up to the top. So now what we can do, now that this is all drawn, we can go back here, click this icon to go to the very beginning frame, or we can just click on the first frame, and we can hit play. And it'll play through our animation. And it's playing slower than I wanted it to. Oh, that's because what it did... We set the time for the first frame at 250 milliseconds, but the second frame just defaulted, and the default time is 2,000 milliseconds, I think, two seconds. So we want to make these all um, 200 milliseconds. Let's turn off onion skin so we can see what's happening. We can click through, left click through, and see what's happening manually. But if we want all of these to be uh, the same timing, we can just select the first one, and then go to the very end, and hold down shift and select. So well, we can select whatever, the, the last one, hold down shift and select the first one. And now they're all selected with this blue around them. And now we can just say all of them should be, we'll even say 200 milliseconds and hit enter. Now the timing should have been changed for each one of these. So if we click on a certain one, we see everyone is only being displayed for five frames or 200 milliseconds. So now when we hit play, it's gonna slowly go through and do our bouncing animation. So we've just created a basic uh, bouncing animation. And if we want to share this with someone at the same speed, we can just go to File, Export Video, and that'll export the video, and uh, we can then find it on our desktop. We go to My Animation, go to Exports, and we see this video. We can actually upload this video to YouTube right now if we wanted. And it just loops over. I have it set to the loop right now, so it's just a bouncing ball. Um, pretty cool for, a, for a, a, a very easy to use free program. Um, let's go, there's other options we have too. For example, we could export it. If we want to, we could storyboard an animation. So we could storyboard this and then we could export just the images like we did in the last video where we go to um, export scene as images. And then we get all of those different images right 
here shows us every state and we can just press over and click through. We could import these into a more advanced animation program and then refine them and clean them up a little bit. So yeah, but there's just some, some different fun options there for doing basic animation. And uh, there's some kind of cool things that we're gonna do. We're gonna look at this shot generator real quick, which lets us do a little bit more 3D. So this, you can create, you could create some more advanced animations using Storyboarder. Uh, if you if you really wanted to, but it's a great one. I would say for kids getting started in animation I think it's a really good program to start with uh, And it teaches you kind of the basics and it doesn't really overwhelm you with too many options as well uh, So go ahead and play with that um, uh, Doing a little basic animation. Oh, and I was gonna mention too, of course You can do audio files so you can record audio over this or you can select an audio file Which I don't have a good one right now, but you can select an audio file to play at a certain uh, point so you, you find a bouncing sound so every time it hits right here You can have like a like a boing or a bounce sound and you can select that audio file And that will play whenever this when it when this certain action happens So you could get a, kind of a longer you could create kind of longer animation complete with audio and everything uh, All within storyboarder so hopefully you found that informative, guys. Uh, leave your questions in the comments below. Uh, if, you, if you happen to create some animations, I'd love to see them. So feel free to share those with me as well and share them with the community. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.